Dear brothers and sisters, the saints in Christ, welcome to a new episode. Uh, this, in this episode, it is related to the faith and deeds, but in this episode, we uh, answer w one very important question for those who are uh, insisting that uh, uh, justification by both uh, faith and deeds. And also, in this episode, we will study also a righteous person job and also how the Lord will assess our deeds in the last days. All right. Uh, first of all, to answer those uh, people that insisted on the uh, uh, deeds as part of the justification in addition to faith, although we, we covered this in the previous episode, that deeds will justify you before men, not before God at all. You cannot boast before God, I'm good, I deserve to go into heaven. No, you cannot. Uh, I found actually two texts that we, we, we studied before, but I found each text of them a very unique in the sense one part of the text assures justification by grace alone. And at the same time, in the same text, it also assures it is not by deeds. So what would you do with this? All right, I remind you with something before I read these ones. Why Lord Jesus was talking to people by parables? You know why? And they were hard, by the way, to understand what actually the Lord uh, wants to, uh, to say or what is the message behind it. It was not easy. Disciples had to ask him, tell us what or interpret to us the parable of this so-and-so. Lord Jesus was doing that and it is the answer, by the way, in the Bible because he wanted those who are not really interested just to go. There is no place for those ones. They come, just listen, and at the end of the, of, of the sermon, uh, they're looking for like a miracle or some food. That's it. But some others, which is very minority, I hope you are one of them, are interested. What actually did he mean by this? And they go to him, Lord, teacher, tell us or interpret to us, explain to us, what did you mean by this? Then he will tell you, aha, for you it is given. To understand the mysteries of heaven. All right. So, if you insist, I will not answer you. Answer actually in, in the previous episode. If you're still insisting, I'll get you those two tickets. Maybe you review yourself. The first one is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. Let's read this together. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Full stop. And that is, and that's that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Happy? This is verse 8. Verse 9, not of work. So it, it assures in verse 8, it is by grace and assures in verse 9, not by works. And if someone tells you, ah, work is here means the works of the law, no. It is in the absolute meaning. If it's only for the law, he would say, Meanwhile, if you think it is of the law, I wish if your works that you talk about in the church that will take you to heaven will come to the level of the works of the law. What they, th what they tell you in the, in, in the church uh, about the good work is that the monks do, that this way they go to heaven. Uh, someone ties his hair to the ceiling to stay overnight like, reading prayers, he is asleep. Or sleeping on the floor or not to eat meat all over your life or not to bath. All this stuff is being done by all these monks of Southeast Asia, by the way. So this will not aid this what take you, take you to heaven. Now we read in this verse, God has something far, far better in store than this. Okay, so let's continue. Not of works, lest anyone should boast before God. No one can boast before God. I can do it. If you can do it, then Jesus died for absolutely nothing. Now listen to this one. This is an important one. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. For, for what? For good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. I got here two things. Number one, 
it says God prepared some good works for us. Uh -huh. So if you are really like a very strong believer and you have such great intimate relationship with Lord Jesus, the work that he will assign to you it is not like to feed like the uh, uh, like the poor people, which actually even non-believers doing this. But in fact, he will assign to you a very specific job to work for his kingdom on earth. Something special above the average ones. All right. I hope that this will catch your eyes and you try to like to, to, to think about it. Lord, like use me for the glory of your kingdom. He might assign you, believe me, to preach the gospel to some of the non-believers. All right? Okay, anyway, it's not, not for everyone this one. Second thing, according to this text, we might say we are justified by faith, not by works. We are justified by faith for good works. How about that? We are justified by faith for good works. This is exactly what we read, okay? This is, was Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. If you'd like to read it, reflect on it at ease. Okay. Second verse. Second verse. Romans eleven six, And if by grace, then it is no longer by of works. So either this or that. So part of it says by grace and the other part denies it, that it could be works. So either this or that. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. But if it is of works, it is no longer grace. Otherwise, work is no longer work. So what would you do with this? You're stuck here, right? You're either, either or. But the answer is easy. Good works will justify you before men, not before God. So justification before God only by faith. If you insist on the whatever in your head and you don't want to do this, it, majority, by the way, will do this. Majority will be doing this. Okay. Uh, let's continue. So now let's uh, start our episode. First of all, some reflections on good works. Number one, what is your definition of the good works to be done by the faithful people or the believer? What is it? You think about it. What about the good works that are being done also by the non-believers totally? Some people could be atheists, could be uh, agnostic, whatever. Muslims, Hindus, they have nothing to do with belief in Jesus as a savior. They do also good works like yours. So what do you reckon before God? What is the situation? Number three, what about your good, sorry, your bad deeds? Don't you do bad deeds. Of course you do. So what is the situation before God about those ones? Especially the scandals that even by highly prominent uh, religious people, sexual harassments, especially in the migrant countries, and they even they have, they have to flee because of the uh, cases that in the courts against them for sexual harassments and also for financial corruptions. All right. What about you? The stuff that you do, which is, is very bad. Now, come to number four. What about the good deeds you do, but actually you do it because of people? So, in fact, uh, like you'd like to be high, like to be known to the Pope and the Bishop and to be praised by the people and they give you a title and all that stuff. Bad luck. You got your own wage on this. It's equal to God. It's equal now to zero. We don't know, of course, but and uh, you, and you walk in a way. You are the person that actually uh, built all this building for people to. Yes, yes, yes. All right. You do some good deeds, but like the Pharisees, so to be seen by men. How, what is the value of this before the eyes of God? We'll see this. I'll keep, stay with me. So that was the first bit on the episode. Number two. Now we're going to study, take some time on job. Everybody knows job, right? 
Okay, now let's read about Job. <coughs> Job challenges God. Job, the righteous person, righteous man. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright and the one who feared God and shunned, shunned evil. Job 1. And Job talking to his friend in Job 6, Teach me, and I will hold my tongue. Cause me to understand wherein I have erred. Oh, I don't make mistakes. Is there injustice on my tongue? Can't my taste discern the unsavory? Unsavory? I know they, I'm doing the right thing. Job 9, I am blameless. So, have you reached this point of good deeds? We read some of his good deeds to the point here. Yeah, you are, uh, you are I, am, I am blameless, yet I do not know myself. I despise my life. I am afraid of all my sufferings. I know that you will not hold me innocent. He's talking to God. I know I'm, uh, uh, you, you cannot say I'm bad. No, I'm not a sinner. Yeah, this is job. <laughs> <coughs> Job 10, my soul loses my life. I will give free course to my complaint. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say to God, do not condemn me. You cannot, do not condemn me. Show me why you content with me. Although you know that I am not wicked and there is no one who can deliver from your hand. Luck. I'm good, but what can I do? You are stronger than me, but I, he can, you know very well I'm blameless. I'm not a wicked person. A man is talking to God like that. Job 13. Listen carefully to my speech and to my declaration with your ears. With, with your ears. See now, I have prepared my case. I know that I shall be vindicted. Not convicted, but vindicted. See, someone. So, do you reckon your good works or the works of those people you think they are saints reaches to this point? And we'll see next time. Now, Job challenges God. Job 13. As we just read, but we read more. How many are my inequities and sins? Of course he did, but he cannot see this. Make me know my transgressions and my sin. Can you challenge God like that? Can you say someone was to that point? Huh? Now Job 16, my face is flushed from weeping, and on my eyelids is the shadow of death. Although no violence in my hands, and my prayer is pure. Here we go. Everything is perfect. I'm not a sinner at all. I didn't make any mistakes. Show me where uh, my, uh, my iniquities. He cannot see his iniquities. Uh, Job 23, oh that, oh, that I knew where I might find him, like find him, capital H, like find God, that I might come to his seat. He, uh, show me where, where he is, like palace, where he is throne. And uh, I come to his seat. I would present my case before him. Wow. Yes. And fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me. And understand what he would say to me. So he say, I can go before his throne. Tell me where his throne is, where his palace is. And I, I, have, my, I have the case. I shouldn't be suffering at all. I am a very uh, like righteous person, blameless person. Where is my mistakes? You cannot see his mistakes, by the way, of course. Number two. Now we'll have part of Job's... Uh, works from chapter 29 and ch chapter 31 when my steps were bathed with cream like I don't make any mistakes and the rock poured out rivers of oil for me like I was blessed by like wherever I go there is uh, a blessing from the Lord when I went out to the gates by the city when I took my seat in the open square the young men saw me and hid and the aged arose and stood. Uh, I, I'm a person that, highly respected person. 
the princess <coughs> excuse me refrained from talking and put their hand on their mouth the voice of the nobles was hushed and their tongue stuck to the roof of their mouth when the ear heard like heard me i'm a very wise person then it blessed me and when the eye saw then it approved me because i delivered the poor who cried out the fatherless and the one who had no helper the blessing of the perishing person that i helped came upon me and i caused the widow's heart to sing for joy I put on righteousness, oh wow, and it clothed me. I am covered with righteousness because of my good deeds. Huh, good. My justice was like a robe and a turban. I was eyes to the blind and I was feet to the lame. I was a father to the poor and uh, I searched out the case that I didn't know. I broke the fangs of the wicked and plucked the victim from his days. Have you done this stuff, dear brothers and sisters? Or those you, you consider them saints, they do, have they done this? Of course not. They are. It's good for them like not to eat meat all their life, not to have a bath all their life. They sleep on the floor all their lives. Uh, they tie their hair to the ceiling and they stand all night like in prayer. Oh, they, oh yeah, okay. Uh, the, region, the, the, the religions of Southeast Asia, they do more than this, by the way. More good works, chapter 31. I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I look upon a young woman? Let me be weight on honest scales, that God may know my integrity. If my step has turned from the way, or my heart walked after my eyes, or if any spot adheres to my hands, if my heart has been enticed by a woman, or if I have lurked at my neighbor's uh, door, if I have despised the cause of my male or female servant when they complained, complained against me, if I have kept the poor from their desire, or caused the eyes of the widow to fail, or eaten my morsel by myself, so that the fatherless couldn't eat of it. If I have seen anyone perish, lack of clothing, or any poor man without covering, if his heart has not been blessed me, and if he was not warmed with the fleece of my sheep. If I have made gold my hope, like I was relying on gold and money, or said to find gold, you are my confidence. If I have rejoiced with my wealth, was great, and because my hand had gained much. If I have observed the sun, like to worship other gods, the sun when it shines or the moon moving in brightness, so that my heart was being secretly enticed, and my mouth was kissed my, my hand. This also would be an equity deserving of judgment, for I would have denied God who is above. <coughs> Excuse me. If I have rejoiced at the destruction of him who hated me, or lifted my eyes up when evil found him, if the men of my tent have not said, who is there that he has not been satisfied with his mate? So, more by the way, what do you reckon about the amount and the type of the work this righteous person in his eyes was doing? So what happened? Chapter 32. So these three men, his friends, seized the answering job because he was righteous in his own eyes. Not only that. Listen to the rest. Then the ass of Elihu, <coughs> the son of Barchiel, the Buzite of the family of Ram, was aroused against his job. His ass was aroused because he, this job, justified himself rather than God. Can you believe this? 
Job like justified himself rather than God. He can see himself. Wow. He is next to God. Uh -huh. or equal to him. He said, uh, show me where he sits and I can, I have a case. And I, I can spoke, speak to him and he will find me. I am definitely a righteous person and I don't deserve anything of any of these sufferings. Okay. Point number three. Then the Lord answered Job out of the <coughs> whirlwind and said, then the Lord actually over four chapters will speak to Job and Job will humble himself. So the Lord told him, now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Would you indeed annul my judgment? Would you condemn me that you may be justified? See, it went to that far. Would you condemn me that you may be justified? This is Job 40, by the way. Then the Lord asked Job around 140 questions, covering four chapters from 38 up to 41, to let him know that he doesn't know the full wisdom of God. So he should not boast, but humble himself before God, which we will read in chapter 42. So the Lord, okay, now he say, come to my street and they have a case, come and show, show me how much do you know of this? You, you would like now, actually, you, you condemn me to justify yourself. So, it goes like that. When you start to be like a like person that is marked high in your church or community, believe me, you will fail, you will fall in this ditch. <coughs> Number four, then Job answered the Lord and said what? Ah, here we go. This is a good thing about Job. I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. You ask it, who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand. He told, ah, I was talking rubbish. So all what he said, all he said now, now he humbled himself. I uttered what I didn't know. Thing is too wonderful for me, which I didn't know. Listen, please, and let me speak. You said I will question you, and you shall answer me. I have heard you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes sees you. Therefore, I labor myself and repent in dust and ashes. But I doubt very much that's, that the... The Pharisees of the New Testament will do this. So actually, uh, I would say, this is my own interpretation, this actually what made Job is a really good man. That actually, when he met God, he realized that all his works doesn't worth anything. He tried like to, like to condemn God to justify himself. It, it, he went that far. But when the Lord spoke to him, he realized, oh, I was really... I have nothing, I don't understand all this stuff. So God is something, is it, I, he is beyond my imagination. And this is the difference between someone hears about God and someone sees God. All right? Praise the Lord, we have the Bible. So you, you shouldn't just hear about God. Go and study your Bible and see and have this relationship with, with the Lord. <coughs> All right. Now we come to the third point in our episode. How our good works will be assessed by God. Let's uh, let's just uh, remind ourselves with two texts that we read before. Number one from Isaiah sixty-four. But we are all like an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. Dear brothers and sisters, Job was way before Isaiah. He didn't have the resources that we have now. So don't keep like falling uh, in pride 
like job. Hopefully, you will realize that your good works, no matter how many, are equal nothing. But now we have the equation. All our righteousnesses are like filthy rag. rags. We all fade as a leaf and our inequities like the wind have taken us away. So this is, so if you, if you, you've done as much as job or those you call them saints, they've done that much, then remind yourself, all our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. No matter what you do, especially when people praise you and speak about you to, uh, to like to glorify you before men. Uh, Mr. Whoever, Doctor, whoever, uh, whatever, whoever have done this and that and without him we couldn't build the building that you, whatever. No. This is what you must keep in your mind. All our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. Keep this in your mind all the time. Second text from Romans chapter, Romans chapter 3. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. So from what we, ju we just read, we come to the conclusion. <coughs> we all imperfect we are not perfect so how come an imperfect person can do a perfect job no you cannot maybe it is perfect compared to the community or the age or the time you live in but before the eyes of god no will not all right now fourth point how our good works will be examined before god this is first Corinthians chapter 3 and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Uh, the traditional people they think the reward is the price of the kingdom of heaven. No. Now let's read the kingdom of heaven is not uh, entered by works from Romans chapter 4. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace. Now for work you get not grace, you get wage. All right, not grace. Entering the kingdom of heaven needs only grace. All right, but as debt. So your work you will get, like if you, uh, the Lord owes you something, a wage. If it, after after examining it to see whether it will worth gold, silver, or just straw. All right, as we'll see. But to him who does not work, doesn't do good works, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness, not for a debt, for righteousness. All right? So now let's go deeper. We we'll read now from First Corinthians chapter 3, what will happen to our good works? It will be examined and it, you might lose the whole thing, by the way. But if you are a believer, still you don't lose your salvation, but you lose your works, the value of your works. So your ranking in the kingdom of heaven will not be as you wished. All right. So let's read this. So this passage actually in the uh, first Corinthians chapter three was an issue between the congregation in Corinthians uh, between Paul and Apollos. Some people say, Paul is better, no, Apollos is better. So, St. Paul wrote to them the following. For we are God's fellow workers. He's talking about himself and Apollos. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. This is my job. And another builds on it. So, after planting the church, someone like another elder, another uh, bishop will continue the job. Uh, uh, Paul must go and plant another church somewhere else. But they build on the foundation that Paul put, which is Jesus Christ. But let each one take heed how to build on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on his found on this foundation gold silver precious stone wood hay straw in other words 
when people are working on this, their good, their, work, their good work could be like gold, could be like silver, could be like straw. All right? Each one, sorry, each one's work will become clear for the day, the day not of judgment, because uh, believers will not come into judgment. According to John chapter 5, verse 20, and remember 24 or 29, those who believe in Jesus, he said, will not come into condemnation, but they have like uh, come from darkness into light. And also Romans chapter 8, verse 1, there is no condemnation for those who are uh, of Jesus Christ. All right? So they will not, as a believer, you will not lose your, your salvation. But you might lose your work, which you get like a, a, a reward for it. So your ranking inside the kingdom of heaven will not be as good as you, see, as you might think. So this is what this, does it mean. For the day will declare, declare it because it will be revealed by fire, as if it is by fire, not real fire. And the fire will test each one's work. Of what sort is it? Is it like uh, gold or silver or wood, stray or, or straw or hay? If anyone's work which he has built on, it endures, if it endures, he will receive a reward, not the kingdom of heaven, a reward for his work. Kingdom of heaven by faith. If anyone's work is burned, uh -huh, he will suffer loss. What loss? The loss of the wage of his work, like his ranking in the kingdom of God. Of, of, uh, of God. But he himself will be saved because he's a believer. So, yet so as through fire. So he will be saved because he's a believer. So there is uh, a believer cannot be perished, by the way. All right. But you might lose your works. So what happens? Because uh, you were uh, you were boasting of your work. So what happens? You your your ranking in the kingdom of heaven will be not as whatever you hoped for. So still you will be saved, but you've lost the reward of your good works. Any examples in the Bible? Absolutely. We know Lot. He was a righteous person. He hates the uh, the uh, all the bad deeds that the people uh, around him was in. But actually, it was his choice to go to live in Sodom and Gomorrah. So what happened? He was saved. He was described as a righteous person. But what what happened? He lost everything, even his wife. So this is the value of our works. It is not participant in our salvation, but we get a reward in it, which is our ranking inside the kingdom of heaven. I hope this is clear enough now. Last thing that I would like you to think about, because when say, ah, oh, now the council decided this person is a saint, and now books about him and the videos about, ah, oh, he's a saint, he's a saint. No, this is unbiblical at all. In the same epistle, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, the Bible teaches us the following. Therefore, judge nothing before the time, the time of judgment, until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then, each one's praise will come from God, not from man. Shall I read this again? Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one, each one's praise will come from God, not from the Holy Synod. Uh, sorry, I took too much time. I tried to cover this one. So please sh share the video on your social media, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and thank you for your time. And unless the Lord comes, we'll meet again in another episode. May the Lord bless you. Salam al-Masih.